Hey, no coding today. Instead, I will be editing some photos taken during my last visit of Park Michel Chartrand. I hope you like this session, so let's go into it. My visit was not that eventful. So I just have a few photos, not that many. I already cleaned out some really bad ones. And I still uh, do some cleaning. The program I use for importing the files from the memory card onto my desktop is uh, Photo Mechanic 6. It's a very eff good program, very efficient. And uh, you can have them all, you can view all the photos in one screen. But what I usually do, I open the first one and then I can go with arrow, I can browse through it. So these are kind of uh, high resolution photos. So they take a little bit to load. But I look like uh, if it's sharp, I usually add this size. But uh, if something is really good, I go closer to see if it's uh, the details are very sharp. This one is sharp, but you see at the eye, it's, I think he's closing it, closed. So uh, this goes off my hard disk and you can, I can flag them with T for trash. This is unfortunate looking away. So trash, trash. This one is good. Let's keep it for now. Here I have this branch in front of the face, so let's remove it. Let's go back to the other one. Yeah, it's a little bit off. I may not publish this one. So this is uh, unfortunately not the tail is not on the picture. I keep it, but uh, I will not use it. So I was a little bit shaky. Here we have the sharp area on the breast. That's not good. We should have the eyes. Keep it. I will keep it, but I will not work with it. But you see here the feathers at the head. Yeah, beautifully. So it's definitely very sharp there. We can actually zoom in here. Let's move up. Oh, this one I did not what I wanted to do. So you see here these fine hairs. Also you see at the eye, you see it is not, it's not a smooth ring. There is some structure in it. So it's a very sharp photo. Kind of like it. By the way, this is a female uh, Northern Cardinal. But you, uh, it's a very common bird and you may know it already. So let's go back to not zoom, but it's it's a nice one. Also nice, very sharp, the whole bird. It's a little bit too much on top, so, uh, but it's okay. Oh, this one I like. Very sharp here around the eye. So if I like and consider to work with it, then I can press one and it gets like a one star. You see here at the bottom. Let me check. Yeah, you can see that on the screen here. So then I can filter for the ones later and we'll start working with them. This is, uh, let's see uh, here. Can I, with zero, I remove the one. So we have like two from this sequence, which is quite the same. Do I have any preference? I have a preference for the second one. This one not because the tail is not in the shot anymore. It's okay, but I will keep it. But uh, obviously the other one is way better. So here we have the male. It's absolutely sharp <clears throat> because you can see the ring in the, uh, the iris in the eye. But it's uh, unfortunate setup. So you have these branches that go in front of it. So uh, not really useful. I absolutely love here the light. It's perfect on his, from his left side on the right side of the screen. 
I may do something with this one just because I can cut it out and then maybe uh, this dominant branch here in front will not interfere with the final composition. But I uh, I won't lose that time. Obviously, that's trash. Trash. Oh, not absolutely trash. I mean, we have something here. <laughs> this one is definitely trash. But uh, yeah, black cap chickadee. I will not delete it. So this one is trash. It's on sharp. So here we have sharp one. Unfortunately, this branch here is kind of uh, continuous. It's very close, so it's not uh, blurry. So it's not a really nice shot here. What's a challenge with this species, let me try to move this up here, is the, the black cap, the black cap because most of the time you cannot really see any feathers, any uh, structure in there. But here, this one, the light is very good. It's obviously on my back, so it lightens that black area very well. Let me uh, see if I can show you all the pictures of this species. Let me remove here the coding stuff. And let's move in here the black cap. Uh, let's go first for the Northern Cardinal. I publish all my photos in my website, Fauna Flora, faunaflora.photography. There you find the photos, you find videos of the species with some uh, data, some description, how to identify where, which parks I saw the species during which season, spring, summer, fall, winter. Now, uh, the Northern Cardinal is not migra migratory. It stays here with us all, all year long. And it's uh, especially in winter, you can do a uh, nice photo. So here is like uh, the collection of photos I had over the years. And uh, starting, I always ordered them by date descending, so that's the most uh, the newest one. This one I consider, I think I have it here in big, uh, best shot, but now when you see it uh, stretched, it's not really a good one. So if I would get a better photo of the male Northern Cardinal, I would be happy, but I could also place here female, and this one is actually a well, quite good shot here. This was a little bit far away, the same here. And at the bottom you have some videos, <clears throat> sorry, some videos I took. So going back, I actually would need a good one, female and male, but uh, yeah, this won't serve. So let's go to the second one, which is the black cap to see if we actually need a photo to improve. I have to say, uh, add here, I most of the time just work with photos where I need a better photo of that particular species. So if I already have a good collection of photos, I would not start to edit unless the photo is really way better. But here uh, I use this one. That's not a real good one because this one is way better. Uh, now here it's squared, so I can show you the raw file here. Uh, it's a bit washed out, it's not really good. I mean, it has some structure here, but it's not uh, perfect. So if I find a new good one, I would edit it. So let's go back. It's unfortunate here, this part here, I absolutely don't like. So no, we'll not be editing. This is a little bit better. You see, I actually would be able to remove it here. So let's put here one. Let's work with this one. Maybe I can get something out because the bird itself is very nice. You see also the feathers in the black area, even here below. 
uh, when I zoom in, uh, this is already zoomed in. Okay, so uh, let's get a bigger zoom just to see if the ring is just a ring or if you see some structure in it. Looks good to me. Here you have like these little feathers getting out. Looks nice for me. So uh, did I, yes, I labeled it as one. I also saw the house finch, house la familier en français. Uh, obviously not a good photo. I tried to uh, record because for me it's kind of the only bird which uh, has uh, singing or which sings this time of the year. And for uh, I like it actually, it's kind of a nice looking bird. This is the male, he has his like a reddish head and breast. But uh, this photo obviously is not good. Let me get out of the zoom that you see how far away this was. So here I took, this is the female and the male. They are shy, so they don't really get close. Even if you, uh, if people are offering them food, they don't get close to pick it from your hands. But uh, they, uh, you can see them often at uh, bird feeders in the parks. But uh, strangely, uh, there were years I well, I didn't see them anymore because usually I go to the Park Mont Royal where I can see them, but not the past years I never saw them. And this year I saw them again in uh, Michel Park Michel Chartrand, and on every visit. So uh, it's quite common this year. And they are in flocks, so this one is actually, it's, it's nice with the light, it's just unfortunately a little bit too far away. The background is too close to the bird, so not really an artistic shot here. I will not work with it, but just to demonstrate, you see here now nicely the female on the left and the male on the right. Here this one is an absolute particular well done shot. Let's put it immediately into trash trash here we have again a male cardinal maybe the same but not especially so here you have a flock of uh, house finches so it looks like all females maybe the one on top is a male and here we have a nut hatch again a very beautiful shot the light is bad on this one, so this I can delete. At least here you can see it's it's nice. Bit too far away. Here, just for uh, fun, I took the squirrel. There's almost no visit in a park any time of the year when I don't see this squirrel. Now, here we have a black variant. Maybe I, I show you here. Uh, the squirrel on my in my website because there's a funny story about the uh, this one actually so to start we have two species here in the area but this one the American red squirrel which is a little bit smaller I saw in two parks only one is the botanical garden Montreal and the second place where I see it and this photo is taken in the Botanical Garden. The second place uh, where I see it is in, the, in a park at the northern tip of the Montreal Island. But we are looking at this one. Obviously, I don't really need any photos of this species anymore. I also have here a nice video, winter when they were looking for food and fight. Sometimes they fight for uh, food. This is below a bird feeder, so they are looking for uh, seeds uh, dropped by the birds here so you have usually they are like this they are grayish brown but there are two variants is a white one and there's a this dark black one and they uh, the white one is not an albino it's a, a recessive variant of the eastern squ uh, gray squirrel and the more common you see the dark one and the photo I took here is from a dark variant. But uh, obviously that's a trash photo. I remove it. 
So here we have the nut hatch a little bit closer. Let me see what I have currently for, uh, from the nut hatch published. If I need something better. You also you have two nut hatch species here, the red breasted and the white breasted. The red breasted is really rarely I, the only place where I saw it and I saw it just once is in uh, Botanical Garden, Montreal. So this is, uh, I don't really think that I need a better photo. It's a very uh, artistic bird, can stand below branches, uh, a vert uh, vertical branches, he is, can stand wherever he needs to. But I have a shot which is, uh, I think is almost perfect to demonstrate how this bird looks like. Small bird, you can identify by the call, as a specific call. So I also have a video of this one, but it's not published. This was like my first shot back in 2014, 15, something like that. Yeah, I don't really need any photo, just if there's a real, really good one, let's reconsider it. These are not overwhelming good ones. Uh, this one is actually trash. Trash. It's okay. It's in the shadow, so you uh, maybe you can see the iris, but uh, no. Half closing eyes. I mean, I, I like this bird. It's, it's, it looks kind of funny. It's good. The branch I don't like, but the branch I could remove for editing. But it's just not overwhelmingly good one. This one obviously is fantastic for trash. Let's put in trash, trash. We got very close actually. Oh, I'm still on Zoom. No, I'm not on Zoom. So it's very close. It's frame failing almost. Pity that the setup is not so good. So this one is quite better. Really nice light on the on the his right side. But you have this branch here which goes into the bird. Pity that's the little branch here. So in wildlife photography, you take shots where you just you cannot really set up the the shot i mean you can optimize but uh, usually uh you have to take a chance that nothing is in inside but this is just really a pity here i would have been a nice shot this one not let's say a little bit out so this one here without this uh, branch here which Let's be clear, I could remove it, but I would remove it with filling it up artificial uh, content. So I don't really want to do that. It's also the, the how they call it, because this branch kind of overlays with the bird shape. I think it's it's not so good. Uh, yeah, pity. If I would have been standing a little bit more to the left, then that would be would have been nice. So uh, here we have back our most common bird in winter. It's it's funny they are around all year long, but mostly you see them in winter and. In summer, it's very difficult to spot them. Here we have a male house finch, the same. So this one we can remove, 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 female, remove. It's a pity. I would like to have a better shot of this one. So this one is also a spectacular good photo. Coming up here, that's the never sure 
uh, I just scroll to see if we have a nice view from the site. <clears throat> was also the last one. Okay, so I to identify or to differentiate the two uh, species that look very similar, there could be a downy or a hairy woodpecker. So let me show this here. Let's go back to search. We have the woodpecker. Then we have the downy and the hairy. So let's go first. I assume that the other one is a downy, a male. But you look at is the length of the here, the length of his beak. If it is also here, this one is, you really have to get a shot from the side so you can estimate the proportion of the beak should go up till mid of the head, but not for, uh, forward. Maybe till the eye a little bit longer. While the other one, let's go back to the other one. The hairy woodpecker, the beak is way longer. It passes the middle of the head, uh, can be almost to the end, uh, almost as long as the head wide. You see here, for example, it goes till here. This one is a little bit far away. So going back to my photo here from my last visit, I would say it's a downy, but it's not definitively sure. But I noted it as a downy in my uh, log. So, uh, because while in the field, I had the opportunity to see here, you can actually quite be sure. So here's the beak and it goes till here more or less and not till here. So it's definitely a downy, but uh, no, no, no good photo. So. Once I walk through the photos, I with LT, I can select all those I marked as trash. Left click, delete selected photos, and here we go. And then I can go here to somewhere I should be able to select the one stars. Okay, that's here. So let's remove the zero stars, you see here. And I get. So let's work with this one here. I think it's a, a little pity because I would have to rotate. Let's see. I will not work with this one. So reveal in Finder. Open with Affinity Photo Tool. My workflow, hello, that was my uh, thumbnail from yesterday video. So it doesn't, let, let's save this one here and close. Okay. So now we are, that's uh, Affinity Photo 2. That's uh, my preferred tool. It's just, uh, yeah, you will see I will, uh, once I try to rotate. So here in the develop persona, I don't, usually don't do anything. I just check if my <clears throat> lens adjust lens correction is here in place. Most of my edits are non-destructive. So uh, I just go in and develop. I have described the photo editing process in my website. And because I'm not editing, I show you here. It's in mu.com under home gear, photo editing workflow. That is a bit blah, blah, blah. But here is what I do to get a shot in a size that I then can publish in my website. I keep it here on the left side so uh, you can see what I'm doing and not the instructions that I should be doing. So here the first step that's uh, we do an adjustment 
Now, if I would have a little bit more space, would be nice because what I would have to do here is to rotate and I really don't have any space. Something because actually it should be here because like this he looks out of the frame not good should be here and you see uh, if i want to keep the the proportion of my original i have no space to work with so i would have to make it very small and kind of get personally close but I do want to have his feet, something like this. Let's make a, a personal photo of this bird. Because I'm shooting in uh, full frame, the resolution like this is still, still good. Yeah, what I have here is... Uh, a retina monitor so uh, you still see now let's let's try to zoom in here to look about sharpness that's fine you have here like these feathers getting out you have a little reddish patch here and you have a dirty beak <laughs> yet some uh, some food left Is uh, the next step would be removing any disturbing uh, details, like if I would have here yeah, a dot from the camera lens, uh, some dust or stuff like that, I would remove it, uh, remove it heel, something like here, for example. If I would like to remove this here. It was not a raster layer. Why is how? No, it's not this one. Oh, it's gone. Let me see. Yeah. I don't know what uh, I'm not. A, I don't know what's happening. Uh, what's going on? So. Let me get here the edit, redo, raster crop. Let's get here big again. There was a pop-up message. I didn't understand what's going on. I have to figure out something is not good. So uh, here you see it's gone. But that's anyway not the way how I'm doing it. I will usually I create the pixel layer. And then here I put current layer and below so when i clean this then i do not destruct the original photo because if i remove it you see it's still there yeah let's remove that spot just for demonstration purpose Noise reduction, that's kind of the next, is a live filter. New live filter. Noise, denoise. And I go, usually go like here into the darker or into an area where it shouldn't have any noise, like here, this one. And then uh, the, uh, I usually f uh, face luminance noise but here doesn't change anything that's because it's here in the frame i have to move it out okay so just a bit to remove it you have here this hello so uh, like bluish Hello. That's about it. Oh, that was too much. My screen is, uh, you don't see that, but my screen has some uh, something uh, there. It looks like it's uh, 
dust on the on the lens, but it's not. If I have doubts about uh, if there's something is in the photo or on my screen, I move the photo to see if that moves or not. So that would be noise reduction, and then we do some saturation adjustments. Let me get back here on screen. That would be an adjustment layer, HSL. Now here, obviously, uh, we could go a little bit with the, in general, up slightly. No, that was not wrong, All right here. just to make it a little bit more intense but i usually try to get kind of the blue uh, down skies things like that i want to have them what they call uh, less intense more especially if there is a a bird a colorful bird in it I could go up with the red, but I don't really want to stress it too much. I think it's already uh, kind of nice. Let me see what happens. So I can go extremely up. That's when I would go down with almost loose. I missed one thing, what I usually do when I do the spot corrections. I try to remove this one, which are kind of uh, sunlight reflection. And obviously I need here a very small Something like this. Uh, let me check here also. Here we have one, so this one I want to remove. here I don't know uh, I don't really like this part it's blown out let me see what happens if I do here some correction no obviously It's okay here, like this part here, I don't really like. Now let's here try to get something a little bit washed out, not so intense. Okay. It's okay, acceptable. I mean, it's not a fine print bird shot, but uh, it's also not the purpose. I just want to have. Uh, a nice photo for my website so that uh, when someone visits and tries to figure out how to identify the species has some nice photos to uh, compare with what a uh, person is looking at in a park so next we try uh, now first we do the curve stuff which usually is here to enhance uh, contrast and for me, I abuse it a little bit all the time just to get the exposure right. I show. Uh, I don't think I will need it on this photo, but uh, in case happening, you see, sometimes here we have actually an overblown portion. But uh, I do sometimes correct exposure if there is not something overblown.
uh, let's say if I move it here over, I uh, move the histogram more to the right. But it's kind of expanding the colors from this point here to here and which sometimes can get some strange distortion issues but uh, I uh, it also means that uh, that I actually move the exposure or expand the exposure more to the right if necessary so here we are at it's it looks good I mean if I go here down it's kind of gets too dark so i'll let that be so let's here stress a little bit and get the darker parts here down this kind of s curve which uh improves the patterns this photo doesn't really need to do that much of this kind of operation so uh, it's already quite well the structure within the feather so so next is uh, i try so uh, I tr yeah let's see i try to do sometimes a uh, hazel removal to see if i get better uh contrast but I don't really need that to do here. So let's go directly to uh, to uh, to uh, improve with uh, high pass filters, and this is also uh, it's my final unsharp uh, sharp sharpening approach. And I increase here the pixel until i see some structure not much but here is you can see it lightly the eyes so uh, i think 0 0.4 is good then we try the different overlay soft light hard light i definitely sure that you won't see in the uh, video what these are doing but it's kind of one has a higher impact than the other one but i think in this case i would go with soft light so this has not really a dramatic impact and i multiply it let's say if i multiply it i have now like one two three four five six you see that it starts to have a higher impact so the, i never go to six i usually go like four and then i zoom in here on the border to see if i get a halo or not and i switch them off again let's uh, switch them off again all and do they do something do they sharpen or not not really no maybe slightly i actually like here this one here let's get the hands up to move it in the middle it's like really personal we are very close i mean he's not looking at us he's kind of ignoring us he sorry she is ignoring us she is uh looking for something different but uh personal clothes and uh, let me go back here because I have the impression that I get some hello here. One less. Okay, three is enough. And this usually creates some uh, artificial uh, one pixel white spots. And that's why I do then a um, uh, medium, uh, medium blur with one pixel. That will be also a what you call a live filter.
I kind of like here, we have like this movement, which is counter movement to uh, the bird's position, but it's not very well defined here at the bottom, so. Then uh, vignette, should I use a vignette this time? I just use a vignette when the, the object is kind of not really well visible, which is not the case here. So let's say that would be a black hardness just to get the shape right. This is like kind of a scale. So let's make this very soft and scale it up. Something like this. And now let's take a little bit hardness out. It can uh, remove uh, distracting elements on the, on the side of the photo. I actually, you see here in the corner, I have this little bit white. Let me go back here and do some healing. But this one, we need a big one. Let's heal that out. Now, uh, before I uh, finalize, I check the histogram is the most of the colors in. So we are definitely nothing blowing out here. Maybe a little bit dark here, but it's just so small. And most of the histogram is in the middle. So we are good here. I then at the end add like a white balance adjustment. So in my case, I do not really care that much about white balance. But what I do is I, I sometimes I just like more colder photos than warm photos. So uh, I usually move them a little bit into the cold. The kind of the impression is that we have noise again. Not sure. Let me check here. It's not perfectly sharp because I don't see here any pattern here. So it's it's okay, but it's not perfect. Say like this. Anyway, so uh, I try to move it uh, into the colder area so instead of this would be warm i prefer to shift it into colder even if that means losing some colors now it's getting a little bit too pink let's remove the pink i mean if white gets bluish or start, then i would stop it's uh, i try to get white being white but I'm not so, uh, I, I don't care that much. And at the end, let's see if we need another denoise filter to see if there has something. Um, I don't think so. Looks good. So we are done here. Let's get that saved. So image, save the raw, I mean the affinity photo uh, working file. And then I do an export. It's still uh, very big. So it has still, I mean, remember I cropped in like half of the picture. So it's still a quite big file. 
how much would it be? So we have to get best quality. I, I keep it like it is, but it's almost 5,000 pixels, so it's quite big. And this one would then go into published photos 2024 and save. It's too reddish. I did uh, now looking at it, I get too much red here. So let's go here back to the way better I mean the peak is intense in color but that was just too much so let's uh, let's export again replace the previous one so I, I'm not happy about this photo. I will not publish it anywhere. I uh, think that from my last park visit, there's not really any good photo, but at least I was able to uh, repeat my workflow here with Affinity Photo 2. And the other thing I wanted to show is that uh, I do from time to time publish photos here in Unsplash. And these photos, uh, they you can use them. So if you uh, go into my profile, then you uh, you can look, and if you like one, you can download a high resolution photo and you can print it. You can like this one here, for example. It's the most popular one the, with the most downloads. So uh, it's a nice photo. You can print, can hanging on your wall. It's free for you, uh, free to use. Or if you are like the other one, you remember the little squirrel? That's a photo I like a lot. Here we have uh, the nut hatch. It's not a very good photo. Here, this one is the one I uh, like most. It was actually kind of not a sunny day. So it, with a little bit sun, it would have been uh, nicer. But it tell, uh, show, shows you very well this, this species, the not hatch. Why press the not hatch? Anyway, so uh, you can uh, look at my profile here at Unsplash. The photos are available. If you find something you want to print, go ahead, download the high resolution, and go to a print, uh, print, uh, printing shop for uh, get a uh, print put it on the wall i would appreciate if you let me know if you did so i always got to have positive feedback on my work so uh, looking forward to hear from you so this was it for today no uh, coding no uh, nerdy stuff today so i hope you enjoyed my photo editing and i wish you a wonderful evening see you bye bye